Thank you. Now for this morning, I want us to rest our mind into our Lord and so so to put our mind focus on the God because He is with us. He is for us. He let us know Him through Jesus Christ and we should be grateful for that. Today we have a new song. Uh, it might be fast but we will sing along. It is a, has a good meaning. So the name is for us and the song will remind us that God is with us. He is for us and He still living and fighting for us day by day. Let's sing this song together. God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our world is shaking, Lord, you remain strong in every season of our life. God, we know. God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our world is shaking, Lord, you remain strong in every season of our life. God, we know, God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our world is shaking, Lord, you remain strong in every season of our Sing it again. God, we know. God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our world is shaking, Lord, you remain strong in every season of our life. Lessons go away, start to wonder why. And trouble tries to weigh us down with fear. Overwhelming is we know the God of miracle is the rock of which we stand. Joy away day by day. This we know the God of miracle is the rock on which we stand. Let's sing. God, we know. God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our word is shaking, Lord, you remain. In every season of our life, God, we know, God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our world is shaking, Lord, you remain strong in every season of our life. With our hands, with our hands, lift it up. We know you fighting for us now And though our world is shaking Lord, you remain strong In every season of our life God, we know God, we know you for us God, we know you with us God, we know you fighting for us now And though our world is shaking Lord, 
you remain strong in every season of our life. God, we know, God, we know you for us. God, we know you with us. God, we know you fighting for us now. And though our world is shaking, Lord, you remain strong in every season of our life. Thank you, Lord, for He is with us. He is for us. He is still fighting for us in all difficult days. We know that we can trust on Him because He is able to save us since day one that we have known Him. Through Jesus Christ, let's worship the Lord together because He is able to save us through the blood of His Son. He never fail us. He is Almighty God. Let us seek His presence and glorify Him. God is able, He will never fail. He is a mighty God. Greater than all we see, greater than all we ask. He has done great things, lifted up, it be the great. To life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. Oh, the Lord, our God is able. God is with us. God is with us, God is on our side, He will make a way. Far above all we know, above all we hold, He has done great things. Lift it up, He defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able, in His name we overcome, for the Lord our God is able. Raise our voice, because He is with us, never fail us. God is with us. He will go before, He will never leave us, He will never leave us. God is for us, He has opened up, He will never fail us, He will never fail us. God is with us, God is with us, He will go before, He will never leave us. He will never leave us. God is for us. He has opened us. He will never fail us. He will never fail us. Lift it up. He defeat the grave. Raise to life. Our God is able. In His name. We overcome for the Lord our God is able. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us concentrate. Grace that we have received. Because our Lord is 
love and through his sacrifice by led the only son who have not sinned to be humble and die for our sin. worship him alone because through his back Jesus has bring light to the darkness let us glorify his name by the breath that he given to us. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart.
shout your praise. Our heart will cry, this morn will sing. Great are you, Lord, because it's your breath in the lung. It's your breath in our lung. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lung. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lung. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lung. So we pour out our praise. glorify Him. And this morning, that we will hear the Word of God through His Scripture. Let Him be glorified. And let us all, brother and sister, be blessed by His Word. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Watana Church International English Service. Let's prepare our heart to worship the Lord. And please turn off your mobile devices or switch to silent mode. Call to worship, cried out, save us, our save God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to, our, to your holy name and glory in your prayers. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. From First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 35 and 36. Next is prayer confession by our pastor. Good morning. When we talk of confession, we talk about forgiving our own sins. But sometimes we cry out to God for the sins of the world. And today, I confess that uh, something is heavy on my heart. And this is a news story that I learned only this past week uh, from the state of Iowa in the United States where I lived for eight years and worked as a pastor just before I came to Thailand. Um, a pastor was robbed and killed outside his church in one of the smaller cities of Iowa, Fort Dodge. Uh, it is some distance from where I lived and served. But people wonder about missionaries going to the other side of the world and won't you be in danger? And what I hear is that there is great danger back in my country, in the United States. And so what I ask is prayers for the people who have lost this man. Thanksgiving to God that he gave his life in service. He never knew that he would be a martyr for Christ. 
none of us knows. But I ask for your prayers, and I ask for your prayers for other pastors in Iowa who may have to deal with fear after this has happened. Thank you. Let us hear these words of the psalmist from Psalm 69. The psalmist cries out and says, But me? My prayer reaches you, Lord, at just the right time. God, in your great and faithful love, answer me with your certain salvation. Answer me, Lord, for your faithful love is good. Turn to me in your great compassion. So let us take a few moments in silence and cry out to the Lord within us. Psalm 69 also has these words. I will praise God's name with a song. I will magnify God with thanks, because that is more pleasing to the Lord than an ox, more pleasing than a young bull with full horns and hoofs. Let the afflicted see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts beat strong again. Because the Lord listens to the needy and doesn't despise the captives. Let us continue to pray together. O oh God of love, the earliest disciples asked you to increase their faith. And Lord Jesus Christ, your answer was that even faith like a mustard seed can do the greatest things. Is faith really like a mustard seed, small but powerful, with a strong flavor? Oh Lord, instead of asking you to make us bigger, or asking you to make us stronger, let us instead ask to have hearts of compassion, like King Solomon, to have hearts of understanding. Let us pray instead that we can know more clearly the love that you have put deep into our hearts, into our spirits, because we know that in Jesus, we are forgiven. Let us come to know in truth what it is to be more and more like our Savior. Let us come to know in truth the rewards of forgiving others, the rewards of encouraging those who struggle the rewards of service like our Savior who came as a servant. Because it is you who give us the power to be more like him. We pray together in his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please be seated. We have been following along in the Gospel of Luke, and now we are in the 17th chapter, and traditionally many churches use verses 5 through 10 for this Sunday in the year. But the more I've thought about it since the bulletin was finalized, I would like to back up a little and add a couple of verses to the reading. So um, it won't be on your PowerPoint or in your bulletin, but Luke chapter 17, beginning with the third verse, Jesus is talking to his disciples, to those who have already made a commitment to follow him. And he says, watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins, warn them to stop. If they change their hearts and lives, forgive them. Even if someone sins against you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times and says, I am changing my ways, you must forgive that person. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Would any of you say to your servant, who had just come in, to the in from the field after plowing or tending the sheep, come sit down for dinner? Wouldn't you say instead, fix my dinner, put on the clothes of a table servant, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you can eat and drink. You won't thank the servant because the servant did what you asked, will you? In the same way, when you've done everything required of you, you should say, we servants deserve no special praise. We have only done our duty. God's love lies deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's love lies deep within me, ever satisfying my Is the love of God enough for our souls? Recently, we talked in my Sunday morning class about why we pray. And of course, there are many, many reasons, but one reason I remembered was it is like exercising the body. If we do it regularly, it becomes a habit. It becomes a part of us. And then when trouble comes, we will draw on that strength. If we pray regularly, often, or as the Apostle Paul says, constantly, when the time of trouble comes, the first thing we will do is turn to God. We will naturally pray. It will come from deep within. It will already be a strength in time of trouble. And there I'm borrowing words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Jesus talks about faith, the size of a mustard seed, and 
Probably many of you have seen that um, some people have jewelry that actually has a mustard seed. I've seen people wear bracelets or necklaces and there is a little, a little glass ball or I don't know, maybe it's polyurethane and inside is a little yellow seed to remind them of what Jesus said about faith. I thought about bringing in some perilla seeds this morning because I seem to have a great deal of them. They came in my package of granola. But anyway, um, they don't have the bite of a mustard seed when you bite into them. But I don't think there has ever been a follower of Jesus who told a mulberry tree to be uprooted and planted in the sea. Um, so maybe none of us has enough faith. I, I've heard of nations building their own pieces of land, in a sense, in the middle of the sea, creating islands. I think that's different. But is Jesus scolding his disciples? It's, it's a little bit difficult to tell. Um, scholars don't all agree with each other with the way he answered their question. But one preacher reminds us that today in the world we live in of global business and global trade, it is too easy for us to think that more is always better, bigger is always better. What did Jesus hear in their request? Increase our faith, O Lord. Maybe he heard that they weren't quite asking for the right thing. One scholar says, maybe he's saying that faith is faith. It is not bigger or smaller. Just like a young woman who is expecting a baby, she is not a little bit pregnant, she is pregnant. She cannot be more pregnant, she cannot be less pregnant. She is pregnant. Maybe that's what he's saying about faith. Don't think about bigger and smaller. Think about trusting in God. More is better, bigger is better. We hear it every day, we see it. We see commercials, we see great big ads on buildings. Bigger is better, more is better. Sometimes when I watch the construction that goes on here in Bangkok, I wonder when the builders will finally decide that they have built a building that is tall enough and they will stop trying to build a taller building. Has that ever crossed your mind? When will it be enough? Will we ever de decide that we have enough shopping malls in Bangkok? Wh when will that day come? Uh, do we have enough 7-Eleven stores yet? Will we ever come to the day when we say, that's enough? We don't need any more. I, I don't know, in this world, <laughs> people think that bigger is better, more is better. Is Jesus saying more is not necessarily better? Just reading this passage and, and not knowing much else about it, it looks like the disciples came up with, with a decent request. You know, they weren't asking Jesus to make any one of them the boss in the new heaven or the new earth. Not this time. They weren't running to keep the little children away from him or making other mistakes, thinking that he should stop talking to this unimportant person. No, this time it, it sounded like a good question. Lord, increase our faith. How are we going to forgive somebody seven times a day if you don't increase our faith? Is Jesus saying, you know, try harder, practice makes perfect? Or is he saying, just begin? 
just trust and keep on. Now, the English language can create a problem with the word faith because it does not necessarily suggest action. Too often, English speakers, especially native speakers, uh, think that faith is just something you think. And there are some who teach that, you know, to be a Christian, all you have to do is think that Jesus is the Son of God. And that's it. Don't have to do anything else. Faith perhaps should be translated as trust. Trust is something we do, an action. Trust means keeping on. In other words, being persistent, perhaps being stubborn. Just a couple of days ago, uh, are there people here who read the upper room? Hong Chanbon, it's a devotional booklet that is available to many in uh, the churches of the Church of Christ in Thailand. And those of us who, who read it would have heard the story of Gideon's army from the book of Judges. Gideon had tens of thousands of people who were willing to help him fight the Midianites and protect the people of the Hebrews. But the voice of God kept saying, no, you have too many soldiers, too many. You need fewer than that. No, you still have too many. And finally, if you read the story, he ended up with only 300 soldiers. That was all he had. And why was that a good idea? Why was the voice of God saying that? Because they would have to give the credit to God if they had any kind of victory. They would know that they had not done it with their own strength. Maybe that is another way to see mustard seed faith. It is too easy for us to look to ourselves and make ourselves important when one minute ago we turned to God and said, oh God, please help me. I don't do the right thing. I don't trust you. Now here's something I recently learned about the mustard seed. Apparently, in the 1940s, this is what, almost 80 years ago, the Germans, German scholars, German scientists, were experimenting with ground up and baked cakes of mustard seed to feed their cattle. Now, apparently the cattle were happy to eat these cakes that were made up of the powdered mustard seed, baked. Unfortunately, wherever the cattle went, they ended up planting mustard plants <laughs> with their bodily waste. So the pastures would spring up in mustard plants instead of the grass that was needed. So this is how powerful and persistent a mustard seed can be. You can destroy it, you can grind it up, you can turn it to powder, you can bake it, you can run it through your cattle, <laughs> and it can still grow. It's kind of amazing. Scary, actually. <laughs> so maybe faith does not have to be big and strong or even impressive, it just has to be persistent. It just needs to hold on. It just needs to refuse to give up, no matter how much it seems to be ground up or smashed or attacked. If we went back and read the whole of Psalm 69, uh, those were the verses that we had in the very beginning here in the time of confession. 
The psalmist has really been ground up and attacked and smashed. He starts out the psalm with the words, Save me, O Lord, for the waters have come up to my neck. And he talks about being accused of crimes he never committed and being forced to pay back what he never stole. Faith just does not give up. That may be part of the reason that the hymn, that cause can never be lost or stayed, is one of the favorite hymns in the CCT churches. Now, you may not recognize it by the title in English. Gib dan prachaud irum dan wainan. Does that sound familiar to some of you? It is a hymn that was written by a man who immigrated from Denmark to the United States. He was a pastor. And he wrote it after he was in the U.S. And it talks about how the works of God begin like small seeds that grow up into mighty trees. And even if the tree is destroyed by a storm, says this hymn, even then, thousands of seeds will be scattered and planted. And they will grow. No wonder this hymn is popular in the churches in this country because Christians are so few. And yet what it says is God's future seems to start small. But it cannot be stopped. It may seem to be ground up and smashed and attacked. But it can't be stopped. So faith does not have to be dramatic or big. It just has to keep on keeping on. So how does that explain to us what Jesus is talking about when he says servants should not expect to be thanked. Now, we cannot take this scripture and turn it around and say, I'm not going to thank you because Jesus says I don't have to. That's wrong. That is a wrong reading of scripture. Don't even try it. Jesus is teaching his committed followers, this is not the crowds, this is his committed followers, how to be like him. Did he ever expect to be thanked? How many times did he try to get away somewhere and pray and rest and found that the very next minute somebody had a need that would not wait? And how did he treat people who had needs that would not wait? It seemed that he was always willing to love and serve. Maybe this is another example of the first will be last and the last will be first. It's not saying we shouldn't be thankful. It's saying that if you are really going to serve, do not expect thanks to be your reward. And anybody who has been an elder or a pastor or a teacher will understand what I mean. The things you want people to thank you for, you are not always thanked. If you are going to lead anyone to Jesus, if you are going to be any kind of example or witness to others, don't ask to be big or strong, even in your faith. Instead, ask to be relentless. Ask to be persistent, like the mustard seed. Don't expect to be important. Expect to be faithful. Expect to serve. Or why would you even want Jesus as a friend? Why would you want to be a friend to the one who said that he came not to be served, but to serve? The serving is where the joy is found. The reward is in 
service. We talk and we preach and we remind each other that God is gracious and that all our strength comes from God. We tell this to each other. But God also asks something of us. We are not just to sit on spiritual couches and expect God to feed us the finest things and that is the end of the story. If we forget that God asks something of us, then we can end up with something that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the famous martyr of World War II, he was killed for his faith. Dietrich Bonhoeffer talked about something called cheap grace. Cheap grace. Cheap grace is when we think that we can be as selfish as we want to, and we can ignore other people, we can cause as much trouble as we please, and God will still forgive us and take us to heaven. Cheap grace is when we assume that because we have been forgiven, we can do it again. We have just received permission to do that wrong thing again. Now, when Jesus says, forgive someone seven times a day in this particular passage, he does not say, tell the sinner that they never did anything wrong. That's not forgiveness. But turn it around and look at ourselves. How many times a day do we need to be forgiven by God if we are honest? If we are truthful about ourselves, we will realize that being forgiven seven times a day is not enough. So why should we say to someone else, I don't forgive you? Especially if they have come and said, I am changing my ways. So, cheap grace and then costly grace, expensive grace grace. That's when we put our whole selves into the work of being and becoming God's person, a follower of Jesus, one who walks in the footsteps of our Savior. In that case, God asks a lot of us. Certainly, Scripture tells us that all of those who followed him God asked a lot of them. And we have to decide again and again, am I going to give my life to Jesus again for the seventh or eighth or ninth or tenth time today? Some preachers will preach that the Christian life is a decision you make once, but really it is a decision that we make again and again sometimes every minute. But what Jesus is saying is that if we want to be his person, if we want to live like him, then being a servant is where we will find our joy. Now, look at the people who serve communion in our church services. They don't look as if they are suffering. But remember, too, that part of the reason we pass the bread and the cup to each other is, to, is a symbol of how we serve one another as followers of Christ. And I want to tell a story because today is World Communion Sunday and churches all over the world even those that have communion very seldom are having it today. Some years ago, when my father was still alive and strong, he was one of the deacons serving communion at his home church, the First Baptist Church of St. Paul, Minnesota, in the United States. And that day was a big celebration because all of those Karen tribal immigrants from Burma 
who had come to that part of Minnesota were coming home to that church to celebrate together because that church had welcomed many, many Karen people over the years, and many of them had gone out to start other churches in that same city. So it was a homecoming day for the Karen in St. Paul, Minnesota, the United States of America. There were hundreds of people. The church was full, and it was a big church, bigger than this building. And for the first time anybody could remember, they ran out of communion bread. And this was in the days when churches would take slices of white bread and cut them into little cubes for communion. And um, one of the pastors stood up. The deacons were still passing the trays of bread. And in this church, everyone waited and held the bread before they ate it together. One of the pastors stood up and he said, could someone prepare more bread for this communion service? But apparently all the bread had been used up. This is Sunday morning. Not every town has a store that you can run to and buy more bread. So the deacons came back to the front of the church with empty bread trays. So there was no communion bread for the pastors. And but what I noticed as I looked around, some of the church members were putting their bread back into the trays so that at least the pastors could have communion bread. But still, my father found that along with most of the deacons, and I think there were, oh, maybe 12 deacons, um, they had no communion bread for the deacons that morning. And he told me later, that it was perhaps the holiest of communion services he had ever been part of. For him on that day, less was more. Is the love of God deep enough to satisfy our souls? God's love lies deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's love lies deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. Thank you, God, for his word that come to us through Ajahn Anne this morning. Next is the Futuri. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. From Colossians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. During offertory, we will sing together, let us break bread together.
please stand for Dr. Sarathi. This moment is our chance to offer to you the things we had thought belonged to us. When we bring these gifts into worship, it is partly for our own need, our own need to be generous for the sake of our own souls. We need, O oh Lord, to practice letting go we need to practice living as servants in the way of Jesus, our Lord. Let these gifts be used in your way, O oh God. We pray through him. Amen. Could we please stand again together and say together the words of the affirmation of faith as found in the bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. On this World Communion Sunday, I am reminded of the words of the well-known hymn in Christ, there is no east or west. In him there is no south or north, but one community of love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord close binding humankind. Join hands, disciples in the faith. Whate'er your race may be, who serves another in Christ's love is truly kin to me. In Christ, now meet both East and West. In him meet South and north. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. This meal that we share together belongs to Christ. It does not belong to this congregation. It does not belong to the Church of Christ in Thailand. It belongs to Jesus, our Savior, and those who love Jesus and have given their lives to him are welcome to share in it. It was on the night when he was betrayed that our Lord took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his friends and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Do this for the remembrance of me. I'm told we are running out of time, and so I want to make a request of our piano player that as we pass the cup to one another, we also sing our hymn of dedication so that during the time of passing the cup, we will sing one bread, one body, those of us who are not holding a tray can look up and see the words. It was the cup after supper that Jesus took, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me.
for as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Since we are running out of time, I will not take much time. Uh, but anyway, um, thank you all for being with us this morning, joining us our worship. And at this time, I would like to especially welcome our new friends who are here for the first time. And if there is any who are here with us for the first time, can you kindly stand wherever you are and show us your face? If there is anyone who are here for the first time. Thank you. I would like to ask our ushers to hand them over the visiting card so that they can fill it up. Uh, after the service, um, we have, like, as usual, we have three Bible study classes. That is one with our pastor, Reverend N, one with me, and the other one with uh, Achan Warji. That is, um, the information detail is given on the um, page number seven of bulletin. So we have Bible study. Um, from the Epistle of James, Introduction to the Christian Faith with our pastor, and also another one is Introduction to the Book of Psalms with Achan Wojihan Zinkai. So the Bible study starts from 10.30 and it will go until um, 11.45, and after that we have lunch fellowship. So I would like to ask all of us to join this um, time of learning and also time of fellowship over lunch. Now I request our pastor to say the benediction. May the Holy One bless you and keep you. May the holiest of all faces shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the light of holiness be lifted up on you and give you peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 